This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Hi, welcome to Strange Love. This week, we're joined by the Gunfighter. Hi, Gunfighter. Hi, Cami. Hi, Dr. Normal. How are you? And Dr. Normal, yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm doing very, very well. My child Please is asleep. Secret. I have a martini. I've got you on the Skype. And two cats. And two cats in my room. Well, well, then how can you go wrong? Yeah, it, especially with the whole child sleeping martini thing. The night thing. is early. I hear you. Now, now here's the question. Now, now, do you have a regular martini? Is it the standard martini, or is it one of those new fangled martinis, like the apple tea? Oh, oh came no, no, no. Early. Oh, I oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I am. Uh, oh, he has his music. I'll give you my martini lecture in a moment. Oh, as as in, your own, in your own good time. Yeah, he's got to get the music. Apparently, I could start, but he wants the music. Well, I wasn't even prepared. I, I mean, it was. Well, it's it's rare day. that we're not the ones that bring up the drinkage. I'm so happy. Yeah, no kidding. I'm just thrilled to have somebody else take Actually, an interest in the martini. I think. Oh, well, martinis are good. Yes, they are. It's a civilized drink for a civilized person. It is, and I don't drink. The sissy sissy martinis. I I have been known to imbibe occasionally a little apple teeny or a chocolate martini, but typically I drink a dirty dry Bombay martini. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very specifically. I'm okay with two olives. Mr. Chaos likes to have three. Dr. Normal, whatever we call him on the show. Dr. Normal, yes. Mr. Yeah, I, I, and I'm even okay with the occasional martini onion. Yes, the Gibson. Gibson, absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, we're, we're, we're on the same page, absolutely. Yes, I like a real martini. My brother is the only member of our family who drinks a vodka martini. Everyone else in my family... A James Bond. Yes. Yeah. I think that's why shaken, he drinks... Not shaken, not stirred. That's right. I believe that's why he drinks the vodka martini. Is too much James Bond in his childhood. We have to remember to ask him at some point when we have him on the show. It's a good change of pace, a vodka teeny. So what are you drinking, Gunfighter? Actually, I'm drinking a glass of sangria. Ooh, I like sangria. Yeah, you know, well, it's 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 the it's the weather's getting warm, you know, and mm-hmm. even though we live in Virginia, I mean, you know, how can you go wrong with sangria? You can't. Did you make the sangria, or did you purchase the sangria? Oh hell no! I, <laughs> I'm 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 a complete philistine when it comes to wine. I bought it in a very large jug with a screw top. Oh, see, I buy a large jug with a screw top to make my sangria. Now, 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 do you do you use the screw top jug wine sangria to make sangria, or no. is it some other type? No. Do you have Trader Joe's back there? We do. We go to Trader Joe's and we buy some cheap red wine, and then I make the sangria with the fruit and the sugar and the wine all mixed together, and you refrigerate it for a while. It's nice. typically a lot nicer, less of a headache. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But I'm I'm kind of a beverage control freak. I like to well, make the in, beverages, yeah. There's room in the world for that. Mm-hmm. It's not a horribly painful thing to have, you know, a, as a friend, a beverage control freak. Because then you get the good beverages. I guess. Yeah, you don't even have to... You don't have to spend any time thinking about it. Exactly. You just go, what are you making? And then it's there. It's magic. Sure. I'll have one of those. Exactly. Um, so you're getting ready for the summer there in Virginia. The- yeah, well, you know what? It, it, it arrived today. We had our first uh, our first day over 80 degrees for the spring, and I was out on the line shooting all day today, and it was a little less than pleasant, and it's only the beginning. Oh, Virginia in the summer. I'm really jealous of the in 80 the degrees. Heat and in the 100% humidity. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's like, it's like walking around in spit. Yeah. How do you, I mean, do, do you go away somewhere sometime, you know, in the summer, you know, is there some place you might run to 
Oh, oh yeah, in the summer we vacation in Orlando, Florida. How's that for? Oh, there you go. Fire. Oh, nice and, and yeah. cool, relaxing, and not humid at all. It's the dry <laughs> oh, no. heat. But you go That's to Orlando right. to go to Disney World, don't you? Yes, we do. I I love Disneyland. I've never been to Disney World. Have you been to Disneyland? You know, I, I, I have, actually. I've been to Disneyland only one time, though, and I was about six years old, so it doesn't really count. Oh, no. You know, my, my mother will tell me about it, but, you know, I don't know. There's, there's, there's like, three pictures of me in a stroller mm-hmm. in 1967 or something like that. Yeah. That's not going to be a good comparison. That I was going to ask, the, you know, the big difference. I know the biggest difference would be that Disney World is a lot larger. Oh, it's huge. But um, not having been to Disney World, I grew up uh, in California. Most of most of my upbringing was in California, so we went to Disneyland. I'm sorry. Frequently. Why are you sorry? I was just dig on California. Oh, you're sorry for California that I lived there, or you're sorry for me that I lived in California? A uh, little of both. <laughs> are you sorry well, for I, me I, or Texas that I lived there? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm sorry for. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Careful. I am sorry for one Everything thing in Everything you Texas. say is going to be wrong now. You know that, don't you? <laughs> oh, there's not a whole lot that's wrong when I have a martini, though. I'll be... <laughs> yes, there are some bad things about Texas, but I don't want to talk about bad things about Texas. So, mm, have you... No. Did you grow up in that area? <laughs> no, actually. I was born in California, and oh. I moved to... my Well, my parents moved, and I went with, uh, to New Jersey when I was uh, not quite six, my parents divorced uh, when I, in 1969, and away we went with my mother to New Jersey, and I was there until I was 17 when I joined the service. So I guess I could call New Jersey home uh, for my formative years. But it was after your formative speech years because you have no Jersey accent. None at all. None at all. But my mother is originally from Pennsylvania, and uh, my grandmother, her mother, mm-hmm. uh uh, is the daughter of Quakers from from Eastern Pennsylvania, and so diction was a very, very, very important part of their lives. So the Quakers probably don't sound like most of the uh, rest of Pennsylvania. No, they don't. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, they. You know, I'll tell you, she grew up, my mother, about uh, maybe a thirty-minute drive from uh, Trenton and Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't sound like that either. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because she was raised by a mother who was raised in by the Quakers. Quakers. Mm-hmm. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You normally, you get someone from from anywhere in Philadelphia, and anywhere in um, not Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and you can pick them out of a lineup just two words out of their yeah. mouth. But my great grandparents were from, were Quakers from Switzerland. Really? True story. I didn't. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, I did know that, because there was the no singing or something. Yeah. Yeah, the no music. No singing, no dancing, no talking. Footloose. No no fun. Yes. Yeah. No fun. No wonder you became a musician. Oh, yes, my grandma, who grew up in that environment, loved music and didn't play an instrument, but loved to listen to bands and stuff and play cards and dance. All the things that she was not allowed to do as a child. That's right. That's she was right. she was a rebel. Yes. Absolutely. I love rebels. Rebels so I, are good. So mm-hmm. I guess my point was that you're you're used to kind of summers over there. As yeah. opposed to me, who at one time as a young teenager spent a little summertime in Virginia and Washington and went, Oh my god This is hot. Yeah, it it can be pretty brutal. Especially if you're not used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I spent three summers in Texas as a child. Really, there's not much that compares <laughs> heat-wise and humidity-wise and biblical weather-wise. Well, there's Texas. I, I just said yeah, well, Texas. Oh, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Did you Texas say Texas? Texas is special. Texas is a special armpit, and I lived in the armpit of the armpit. Well, like around here, it gets like over 90 degrees... And, and people start to cry. No breeze, and I'm like, ah, it's too hot. It's yes, in Portland, hot. if it gets above, I'd say once it gets to 88 in Portland, people start to complain. Like your husband. Oh. Yeah, like my husband and everyone who grew up in Portland and everyone who's lived in Portland for more than 10 years. 
That's right. I like it kind of breezy, kind of maybe approaching the 70s. Kind I, of. I call them weather weenies. Yeah. Well, you know, Susan and I have this thing that if, if we ever lived anywhere north of here again, it would have to be either Vancouver or Seattle. Mm-hmm. Seattle's a beautiful place. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I have my, my favorite aunt, my godmother, lives just outside of Seattle. Too much traffic in Seattle. There's a lot of traffic in Seattle. That's true. I but think traffic's no, bad here, man. Traffic in Seattle can't have anything on traffic in D.C., really. Yeah, you know, I, I I I hear you there. Although it ranks up there, it you know with the when they do the national statistics, um, Seattle ranks heard, in the eastern, in like DC and some of those metro areas too. So okay. yeah, it's pretty insane here. I'm gonna move off off of traffic for a moment. I realize that okay. we need to have you tell everyone where your blog is. Uh, my blog is at. Um, oh geez, you, you you threw me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, she did it at the top of the show. Absolutely. www. Ty- um, no, that's not it. It's www. Uh, gunfighter one. dot typepad. dot com slash warrior. Or slash. You, or you can just go to the strange love page and and click on the word gunfighter beneath his picture it'll take you right over there and then you can bookmark it because you're going to want to go back if you haven't been there before good cover thank you you're very welcome um my friend bubble wench had read your blog several times and at some point she sent me an email and my father an email at the same time and said you guys are really really missing out you have to go read this you're going to love this guy he's right up your alley and she was very right for both of us we've both really enjoyed reading your blog I'm so flattered. Well, it's just yeah, it, it's a great blog. There's always something of content and something of substance, and uh, like, like you know, well, whether it be a tattoo or a kilt, or uh, you know, uh, pala 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 politics, a tattooed kilt, <laughs> a tattooed kilt. I can't believe I, I left out kilt wearing tattooed um, in my run on sentence. Well, you know, that's okay. It was a lot there's, there's of uh, adjectives. <laughs> lots of time to talk about those things. Um, and then the second item that I have to get out is Sybil has asked what you think of vaginas. I'm very pleased about them. And, and I did see the comment about extemporaneous haiku about them. Mm-hmm. And I did write one. And wow. it is in a piece. It is a notepad right here. I'm so excited. I have it. This is the first. Do we have um, a haiku music? No, we don't need. Do we need haiku music? Yeah, we just regurgitate the It's not the, the bar drink. music. Yeah. Not the drink well, music. Sure, lounge music for haiku <laughs> about vaginas. Exactly. Okay, I'm excited. This is Tonight's the first time we've haiku, ever had haiku. Gunfighter. A haiku about vaginas. Vaginas, they rock. A happy place for my cock. Tactile. Act of love. I am so. Yeah, there it is. I am so thrilled. That is just awesome. I, I'm sure that Sybil and Deb will both be absolutely pleased. That's and it fantastic. went well with the music. And Miss Bur- <laughs> <laughs> it did go it well was with, the with the music. It was beautiful. That'll be a soundbite we'll clip out of the show for the best of I, end of the year. I think so. That was fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It took me all of about 15 seconds to write that. I'm still pleased. I had to explain to Mr. K- Dr. Nor- yeah, whatever we call Mr. the guy Chaos on the show. Mr. Chaos for this show. Mr. Chaos for this Mr. show? Mr. Chaos to you, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to explain to Mr. Chaos before the show that a haiku is 575, and he was like, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, and then you he stopped, tell and me I was like, was that time. it? Was that? I wasn't <laughs> counting. I, I'm sorry. Can we go back? Well, there's always three Did, lines. That was, that was the pause for dramatic effect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was good. Though. Sometimes that doesn't work. No, it worked. It, it okay. worked except for except for Mr. Chaos had the had the face where he was like, um, I forgot and didn't listen when she told me about haiku. Now I don't know how long it's supposed to be. <laughs> but now you know. Three lines. There you go. Three lines of something. Yeah. Can can you come up with a haiku about vaginas? No, I can't. <laughs> I bet you can. <laughs> I could come up with a song about vaginas, but <laughs> maybe, not a haiku. Maybe you'll have to write a song about vaginas, and we'll we'll have to have Miss Burroughs on the show again. You'll have to share it with us. 
The song? Well, I think... Yeah, you don't have a vagina to share, so you have to share the song. Okay. I may have just bought one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> you bought a vagina. Let's go back to gunfire now. You yeah, you know, there's not, there's just so many things to say there. <laughs> Let's back pause magazines. for a commercial break. Oh, commercial break? No, we're not buying a commercial oh, break. Oh, is this where we play the porn music? Okay. Treasure Licious. It's coming. Oh, that's probably the bad way to introduce yeah, it. Right? Yeah, really. <laughs> or the right way. It, just yeah. chill out. This is porn music? Yeah, it gets there. Okay, because this isn't. This part is not good. All right, there you go. That's porn music. Treasure licious. When you're watching porn, <laughs> save your treasures on the web with treasurelicious.com. Okay. Do you have a haiku for this? <laughs> I don't think I do. You can say anything you want during your porn music here. All the pressure of being gunfired with porn music. I like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Play the D. That's the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it breathy for me, baby. Thank you. <laughs> there are days that I wonder if we should take his keyboard away, but... but... Hi, Holly. Oh, no, no. I, I, oh, I think be <laughs> that was for stick. you, Holly. The porn music was for you. Because you guys don't Love. have... Love. That's right. You don't have porn in Cardiff. They do, too. They have to have porn in Cardiff. No, they just have David Tennant. David Tennant. Oh, by the <laughs> way, you know what? We, we should just quickly recap... In the chaos hey. world here. No, no, no. Oh, I have we a question for Gunfighter last first. Last week. Can we talk about last I week? I have a question for him okay. first. You like sci fi books. Absolutely. Do you watch sci fi? I know you did the Sarah Connor Chronicles, but. Sarah I, Chron- I, Chron- I, Connor Chronicles? I, I do, but you know what? It, it's got to be quality. If it's not, I just can't mm-hmm. be bothered. Have you watched the new Doctor Who? I have not, but I have, I have, I have DVR'd a, a, a lot of it. Okay, you I should. Just have, I haven't found time. You should watch it. It is it is high quality, excellent. And I don't just say that because I find David Tennant adorable. It's really so a very let, good show. Let's talk about what we were doing last week when there was no pro- podcast. Last week when we were supposed to have my brother on the show, we were clutching our stomachs uh-huh. with the stomach flu. It was lovely, and that started oh, with me sure. waking up at like Three two o'clock. in the morning on a Wednesday. Went Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, going in and then being out of it. But I totally caught up on like season two, season three of Doctor Who or whatever. Season three with David Tennant, and it made me feel better. Mm -hmm. David Tennant made me feel better. So for now, officially, I take back everything I said about David Tennant's balls. He made me feel. I suppose that's a good thing. I mean, you know what? I'll tell you. Stomach flu being a really, really ugly thing, but occasionally when you get sick, you get so laid out, you have to just hunker down and watch things that maybe exactly. you would have. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no time to watch TV, and there I was, like, laying in bed, and Cammy's like, you want to watch a little Doctor Who? And it's like, eh, I've got nothing better to do laying here. I can't even get my laptop out. I'm so sick, so. I think we watched six episodes of Doctor yeah. Who while Kay was at school on a Friday afternoon. That's right. Have you, you've never watched Doctor Who? I, I've seen I've seen the old Doctor Who. Some yeah. of them. I mean, the I, I was ones. never a huge fan, but you know, I've seen some of them. Yeah. I'm a blasphemer here, but the new Doctor Who for me way better than the old Doctor well, Who. And I did watch the old Doctor Who as a kid. It's like Star Trek, right? Better effects and all that stuff now, but still, the old Doctor Who. I mean, Tom Baker was he was a good guy. Yeah. Now, did you, um, are you, don't don't get me started on the old Star Trek. I'm I'm I was I'm about quite to ask. the old Star Trek kind of guy. Okay, I was okay. just gonna, I was going to ask: Are you an old Star Trek or Next Generation? And you've just answered that question for us. Oh yeah, James T. James T. Kirk, the man, absolutely. Yeah, one of my role models. James T. Kirk, more famous than the actor that portrayed him. 
Absolutely. He absolutely oh. made William Shatner. Oh yeah, I mean, you know what? I'll tell you what. I I still watch. I watch Boston Legal every every Tuesday night. It's the only network television show that I watch with any regularity besides American Idol. Mm-hmm. And yeah, okay, laugh at me if you will, but I watch American Idol and I don't have any shame about it. I was at school yesterday, and it was very warm in the hall when I took my jacket off. And one of the grandmothers that regularly picks her grandson up from uh, Kay's class, I guess had never seen my tattoos before because she started picking up her grandson during the winter when I always had a coat on. She came over to me, grabbed my arm and looked at my tattoos, and, and then had this very sad moment with me where she told me how upset she was that the girl that just got kicked off American Idol got kicked off. Because my tattoos brought that to the forefront, I guess. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Damn, well, get over it. Now, woman. I don't watch American Jeez. Idol, so all I could do was tell her that, yes, I had heard of, I think she was an Irish girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, no, I had no idea why she got kicked off the show because I have never seen it. You know, now, there are, there are those that, that posit that she got kicked off of American Idol because of her tattoos. I would disagree. I, I think that there were a lot of people who didn't like the fact that she sang uh, the Superstar song from Jesus Christ Superstar. And I, I think it really did piss off a lot of people. It didn't piss me off. I thought she was really, really good. Um, but then again, there's me with my tattoos and all, so I may be a bit biased. Hmm. But she was, do you think she got kicked off then because she offended people with the Superstar song? Or do you I think, think it so. was just her time? No, I, don't, I, I really don't think it was her time. I think, I think that, that, that blonde-haired country chick who, who can't remember the words to the songs and has to stop and start over in the middle of them, I, I think she has virtually no talent. You know, what do I know? Well, if but you have to stop I, and start over in the middle of a competition, you should just be kicked off because you can't get through the song well that's what i thought yeah you know, i've never watched an episode of the show she but... did dead man walk in there yeah it's unfortunate okay so now i have an answer uh-oh um mr chaos wants to go back to the star trek conversation you can tell because he has all of his he's loaded an entire disc of star trek oh, effects it... now i just heard the communicator music do you have the triple noise over there i don't believe it oh what was that noise? Oh, that's a good one. That's the photon torpedoes. The photons. <laughs> that's right, the photon torpedoes. Okay, who are we torpedoing? Oh, uh, I... It's got to be the Romulans or the Klingons. The yeah. The stun. That was the zapper, right? The... Oh, so, that's I'm, the transporter. Transport. I'm so geeking out, it's not funny. This is awesome. Okay, okay, this is Why your didn't test. I know you had this disc? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> we're working on the show, right? This is only... This is our 10th <laughs> show, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! That's the the alarm of some nature. Yeah, what's that? General quarters. Actually, I think this one goes with. Nope. This one would go with this one, right? Oops, sorry, sorry about that. Here we go. Right. Now, right about this time, there would be one of the guys in a red shirt who doesn't have a name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He'd walk around behind some rocks and get killed. Exactly. Jones, can you check behind those rocks? <laughs> That's right. Yes, Captain. I think it was an Eddie Izzard. We were watching an Eddie Izzard skit, and he yep. did a brilliant skit about the uh, the guy in the red shirt. It, which is like the most, this is like the comic meme of the century, right? Every mm-hmm. stand-up comic you name does the red you know star trek red shirt guy are you, are you familiar with eddie izzard i am um i i'm i'm gonna assume i i, I love the assume make an ass out of you and me but i'm a really big eddie izzard fan because his comedy is so historically based in a lot of cases mm-hmm. and i laugh hysterically at anyone who can actually take history and take notes and from history and funny. take facts from history and then make me hold my ribs laughing and then talk He's about very Star good. Trek. yeah with lipstick and and way too much mascara <laughs> yeah well, you know. <laughs> more female than female yes he can get pretty fancy pants 
Was it all the Star Trek you had for us, darling? Um, yeah, I think that's good. Okay. I think that's that's well, that's pretty good. Well, I saw via Twitter that you were you were reading my one hundred things. So, do you have questions about my one hundred things? Because you know what, I don't really remember what I wrote in that thing. Um, it was a hundred things that included uh, lots of stuff. <laughs> I read through it, and I don't really think that anything was too non-explanatory. Do you still have racing greyhounds, or is it that you do you have a dog currently? Uh, no, the, the we, we had adopted two racing greyhounds. The first one we adopted uh, was nine years old when we got him. Mm-hmm. We had him for four years, and he, you know he was he was at uh, at uh, thirteen years old. And greyhounds will live twelve to fifteen years depending on their health. Yeah. And he did, he did fine until all of a sudden we realized that he was starting to limp a bit. Aww. And then we noticed this, this egg-shaped lump in his shoulder. It was, a, it was a cancerous tumor. Poor baby. And the poor soul, the only thing they could do for him was take his, his leg at the shoulder yeah. or put him down. And he was in pain. And so uh, I did the hardest thing I have ever done in my life and told the, uh, the vet that, that without taking the dog home so my family could say goodbye – to put him down right there and right then. Yeah. That's... Ugh. Uh, when I was a baby, my parents adopted an Irish setter from the pound. She had been mistreated. Uh, and she was my dog. She came home, identified me as a baby, and she was my dog my entire life until I was 13, almost 14 years old. And she had uh, arthritis and various other ailments and could no longer um, remember anything couldn't get up and down stairs, could barely walk down the hall, wouldn't eat, and my parents had to take her and put her down. And that was, for them, I think, one of the most difficult things they ever had to do. Not to mention, for me, I didn't leave my room for two days. <laughs> yeah. So. Not easy to do. No, it's not. At all. I love dogs. Although we do not have so one. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> if if only you all could see the look that I just got from Mr. Chaos. Mr. Chaos has never had a dog. It's not Moving that he, on. it's not that he doesn't like them. It's that he's never had one, and uh, he knows that someday we will have a dog. But now is not when we will have it. <laughs> we have two cats and a family. That's good enough oh, for me. You'll you'll be very pleased with a dog as a member of your family. It'll just it'll it'll make everything even that much better. Trust me. I'm from the government. Why lie to you? And who's going to take <laughs> care of The government never lies. Ever, ever, never, ever, ever, ever. Never. Or for never. Holly. Never, ever, 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 ever. I, I, can't, I can't make it go on that long. Holly once did a post where she said ever way too many times. But, uh, yeah, the government never lies. Dogs are good. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Dogs really are good. I don't want to follow the government never lies with dogs are good because dogs really are good. I think what? they are. Yeah. <laughs> what? The? Yeah. Moving on. Move along. Move along. Okay. On. So let me move yes. to another item on the hundred things. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? If anyone is curious what I'm saying, yeah, 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 to, you can Cough, go please. to Gunfighter's <laughs> site. You can look at his list of a hundred things. Yeah. We've already covered the maternal grandmother. So we'll skip that. <laughs> Do, it's like Dr. Cammy with, with the thing. It's like, <laughs> Dr. Cammy. Excuse How me, do could you, you stand up and cough, that? please, for me? <laughs> Bend over. Yeah. Um, let's see. Brilliant historian, scary smart like a wizard. That's his wife. Yep, she mm-hmm. is. And she's a smart ass. She's a historian? Yes, she is. Nice. What What is her history subject specialty? Other than your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Ancient Rome he got that, and don't the Middle East. Ancient Rome in the Middle East. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Nice. Very interesting. And, and, and oil policy. Oil Ooh. policy goes very well with the Middle East, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's very specific and very interesting. Oh, she, she's a brainiac. It's no doubt, no question. That's what, that's, I'll tell you honestly, I met her. I mean, she was wearing, she was wearing this blueprint floral dress when I met her. Mm-hmm. Very cute, very sexy, very hot, um, but, but very modest. At the same time, it was at work. <clears throat> but... What the, our first date, I, I I took the subway to to near her apartment. She met me there. We walked to her apartment, and we spent the next three hours sitting on the floor talking about books. I was done in, right Aww, there and then. Oh, that's so sweet. 
We 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 geeked out like nobody's business. How long have you been married? 14 years. Oh, 14. It, 14. Was, it was 12 years when you wrote this. You need to update your 100 things. I think I should. It, it, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be 14 this July. Wow. July That's 4th, awesome. as a matter of fact. Oh, you wow. got married on the 4th of July. How patriotic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does she also, she also works for the government? Or? Mm-hmm. There's pretty much everyone the, out there works for the government, right? More or less. Uh, yeah. we, we work for different agencies for the government, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we both work for the government. Because out here in Portland, right? Yeah, I mean, sure, there's government, but you know, we're far removed from the government, the federal kind of you're, scene. You're, you're not missing much, trust me. Uh, uh, most people, well, my, our, our neighbor works for the government. Our he's, neighbor he's, does? Yeah. Oh, my favorite neighbor. Yeah, our next yeah, the door biologist. neighbor. He's a biologist and does like... Uh, he, he works for the government. <laughs> no, he does the whole environmental policy. So he comes He's in. He's an and has environmental to say, analyst and advisor. Yeah, it assesses all the biological, analytical type things for the government. Very so, cool. So I yeah, have, it is cool. He's very cool. I have I have chosen my item of concentration from the hundred hundred list. It actually combines a couple of things. You talk at the top about what you do for a living. So why don't you go ahead and tell everyone what you do for a living? I am a tactical firearms instructor. I work for a, a, a federal law enforcement agency, and I hope you don't mind if I don't mention which one. Mm-hmm. We do not mind. Uh, That's totally fine. fine. Yeah, I don't want to scare anybody with the things I say. Um, and what that means is I teach people how to use a variety of firearms to shoot other people. Now, I think that in one post you discussed this, then the, you made a distinction. It's not that you trained them to shoot. It's that you trained them to be able to shoot someone. Yeah, to be able to shoot someone effectively. Now, there's 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 a big difference between being able to use a firearm, punch holes in a piece of paper, and 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 be able to effectively manipulate the trigger in the sights. And the, it's quite another to be able to tell somebody that First of all, here is when it is and when it is not appropriate to use deadly force against somebody. And having made that decision to use deadly force legally, how to apply it um, with this particular kind of firearm or that firearm uh, in a a fully lit lit situation or a low light situation. And by the way, uh, statistics say that 75% of the law enforcement uh, involved shootings in this country happen during periods of darkness or reduced light. So we train with flashlights, we train in the dark, uh, we train with shotguns, pistols, rifles, submachine guns, um, sniper rifles sometimes. I don't do the sniper thing too much. Um, but it, it, it can be very rewarding, as, as strange as it may sound, um, because you know you, you get to see the effects of what you do as uh, as grisly or gruesome as that may sound, but when you're doing it right, you don't have to do any of it. it so it's it's very strange. You spend your entire career training to do the thing that you hope you never have to do. Wow. Right. That's a very good summation. I was explaining, uh, this morning my daughter was asking me about the show tonight, and I was explaining to her who we were having on the show and what it was that you did. And I... And when we brought up the gun, she was like, no, 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 no guns, no guns. I said, no, 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 no. It's okay because he's training people who are supposed to have guns how to use the guns. And she was like, oh, well, that's fine. Well, yeah. Thank you for the clarification. The funny thing is it's very important to me that uh, I I train the people to, to not only to use them. Yes, I want you to use them properly, use them effectively, but the 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 most important part of that is the to to do it ethically and to do it right which is which is a, a very uh, a tough thing i don't know if you saw on cnn today those those officers in new york who were involved in that shooting with that that young fellow on his wedding day they were acquitted and and i know some people who had some heartburn over that but but supreme court case law uh, in in particular, these these cases, Graham versus Connor and Tennessee versus Garner, supports that that their their actions were legitimate. It's you know unfortunate and terribly sad that, that guy got killed, but you know, but there it is. Wow. Yeah. I I, I did see that. I briefly. think it's often difficult for someone to stand on the outside and not 
not having been there and not seeing what happened, what the threat is, what the situation is, and what actually needed to be done and what didn't need to be done. And I think it's from a situation as a bystander or as someone who's completely, not even a bystander, who's removed from the situation, it's easy to cry foul. It's easy to say it's a horrible thing. But you can't really yeah. know unless you're there. Um, but in stark contrast, and this is the thing that I think is interesting, we go down several items on the list of 100 things about you. And it says that uh, you think that sometimes, sometimes you think that you should enter the clergy. And I know that you're very I, involved in your church. I am. I, and, I, and, I, and I've thought about it, and it's 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 still one of those things that I that I actually consider that might be in my future when I retire. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got twelve years to go before I can retire, and uh, when I do that, my youngest should have graduated from college by then, mm-hmm. because that's all mommy and daddy are paying for. So you better get <laughs> you better get a degree in four years, and so I, I think about that. I I I, I don't know. I. I take my faith very seriously. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy teaching Sunday school, and sometimes I think that maybe in my future that I might be, I might, it might be beneficial to me or to the church for me to enter the clergy. I don't know. I wish I, I wish I could tell you that I, I know right away and I know for sure that's what I'll do. I don't. I may very well work at Walmart and write in my part time. What denomination are you? Uh, we're Lutheran. Ah, Lutheran. Okay. Yeah, old school Protestants. I grew up in a Lutheran church as well. Did what? you? Yes. What is it? Is it? Is it, um, is it like the Midwestern Synod e- or a different one? Wait a minute. E L C A Lutheran Church. E L C A. Okay. The E L C A. Yes. Okay, so that's no, not no. like Missouri or something like that. Like the no, no, not the Missouri Synod. And definitely not the Wisconsin Synod. No, right. they're 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 a little more uh, for for to being nice. They're a lot more traditional, and and I think traditional is is a is a is a is a really ugly word to use because it can be misused so often. But it's it's very conservative. But we're not right. For those of the Chaos Listener podcast that know nothing about Lutherans. There are different flavors of Lutherans. Like, Very well said, different flavors. <laughs> different flavors. Like if you have a popsicle and you have an orange cream or a chocolate or peanut butter. No. No. Um, um, blue raspberry. There are different flavors of Lutherans. Maybe you should have porn Lutherans. music while you're talking about Lutherans. Exactly. I think, I think it might be appropriate. I'm going to go. I'm going to move along. Oh, yeah. I see. The Lutheran subject's just not. I think oh, that we I think that we well handled the Lutheran subject. Music. Although I am going to say I learned something or maybe I didn't learn something. You also as a hobby make prayer beads, uh rosaries. I, I did not I know that the Lutherans now am I and I am I do Lutherans use rosaries? Not in general. No. Okay. Then I wasn't completely And I'm nodding crazy. my head in agreement. Okay. So where did you start that? Where did that come from? I have the very strange and very strong urge in me to be able to do things that people tell me that I shouldn't be able to do or that I just normally wouldn't do. Like, oh, those rosaries are beautiful. I bet I could make those. And then I set about to find out how you make them. And I said, all right, let me try this. And you know what? It turned out to be a lot of fun. I understand that urge. I tend to want to do things that people can't tell me I can't do as well. It's just something you about know, it. You're you're a Lutheran. You're a man. You're black. You're not supposed to do these things. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, well, I've seen the photographs of them, and they're absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. And then now I'm going to move along. Again. Sell them to the Catholics. No, no, he sells we'll get them. Get back at them. I no. have. <laughs> he does sell them. You sell at um, Smithsonian? Am I crazy? Am I wrong? Where no, do you the, sell them? The National Cathedral here the in National Washington D.C. They bought ten. They bought ten rosaries from me, and the last time I went up there a month ago, about a month ago, there were only two left. For viewer, for listeners of the <laughs> Chaos <laughs> Podcast, Lutherans and Catholics are vowed mortal enemies. Are they really to the death? Are they no, really? No, that was a joke. <laughs> okay. 
You never yeah, know. Sure. There's some, you know. I went you, to a Catholic high school. You can tell how religiously <laughs> I, grew I up was in a, raised. In a combination of a, <laughs> of a Protestant and Catholic neighborhood. I was raised so. going to church until I was old enough to say, I don't like this. God does mean things in that one part of the Bible. Can go to I not, a Catholic high school. Can I not go to church come anymore, home and, please? And just go, look, man, I'm having to study this religion and that religion. I'm done, man. Yeah, no, uh, I think... Uh, and that, I got A's, too. So, I mean, it was like religion, philosophy. It was like, oh, St. Thomas Aquinas, I see. No one does that here. Uh, my religious you know. upbringing was very much, um, be a good person, don't do bad things, and Jesus and God will love you. And you're a heathen. And apparently, and that makes me a heathen. You need discipline. Actually, <laughs> actually, no. I think you're doing it right. That's kind of what I thought, but you know, that was yeah. my upbringing, so yeah. But still, our daughter went to a religious preschool. She went to a, a she, well, she went to a Lutheran preschool, didn't she? No, am I oh, crazy? Yes, she did. Oh, a good, yeah, I was a Missouri right. Synod. Yeah, Missouri she went synod. to a Lutheran preschool. That happened to be Missouri Synod. And uh, although it was cool, everyone yeah. was relaxed. The pastor. There oh. were only four canings. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you can answer this question for me. <laughs> I'm joking, is, of course. This is always a big curiosity. I get that Catholic priests are priests, but then there's mm-hmm. priests, there's pastors, there's ministers, there's several other terms. Um, brothers. S- brothers, fathers. Sisters. I get sisters. I get that. But do you know how you make the distinction between pastor and minister i got sisters too right on the knuckles man let me tell you that hurt <laughs> yes that's what you get i need a rim shot of all this stuff i need like a little no, no, no. do you know why that it's it's the difference between because i once called a minister a pastor or something and was was promptly loudly corrected oh it depends on the religion though i mean people get you know i mean the church i grew up in was kind of like yeah whatever don't worry about it it's all good, you know. Yeah, no, but, actually, but some it, people, it was it was when we went to church with uh, Mr. Chaos's parents once, and I called the pastor the wrong thing and was reprimanded loudly by my mom in front of lots of people. No, it wasn't by your mother. It wasn't. No, that's the, if it was by your mother, it wouldn't have been surprising. Really? It was by one of the acquaintances of your mother. Gunfighter. Why have I never heard this story <laughs> before? This is. You know, I I, I I don't have an answer for you there. I wish I did. Do you have a haiku for this situation? Do you see why Cammy doesn't go to church? At church, Cammy gets reprimanded. Cammy doesn't like being told no. Well, I'd reprimand Ooh, you. Just I'll, because. you know, I'll bet Doctor Normal doesn't tell you no a whole lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Would I be right? Yeah. Not to change the subject he, from church you know, to anything else. He tries but, uh, not to tell me no, but but he's more successfully told me no than anyone else have ever known. Wow. From him, I put up with the wow. word no. Yeah. Win for normal. <laughs> <laughs> Win for Dr. That's normal. the first time I've heard that. That's the sign of real love when I actually listen to the word no from somebody. Quite frankly, in this marriage, I just have been led to believe there's no fucking hope. <laughs> just, no, just go with it. <laughs> there's no hope. Just do what Cammy says. Damn get it. a sewing That's machine. Right. Get a dog. Get a kid. Get a dog. I don't hey, I Just don't. get it. Do just... I have a dog? Hmm? Do I have a dog? Yeah. Do I? Well, I, I stall. I make you like <laughs> podcasts and things like that just to stall and take your attention off. <laughs> I want a dog. Look, I made you a podcast. <laughs> Look, you have... Right. I have a new keyboard. Yeah. Here, Look. listen to this porn music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> porn music. And look, you have your own theme song, sweetie. Oh, no, that, that's the classic, right? Where did you get that? You went to the music store. You bought that. <laughs> look, I wrote you a new song. <laughs> it really is true. He'll go to the music store. He'll sneak to the music store and buy something that he doesn't need to have, in my opinion. And then he will either buy okay, me I'm a new computer. I'm taking back my mic that you're <laughs> speaking in right now. No, this is my microphone. <laughs> I love you, microphone. Ooh, southern accent. Oh, did I do it with it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nice. Mm-hmm. I've been watching. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I've do been... you do accents? Uh, no, actually, I don't do accents very <sighs> well. No. I only, I only do one accent. I only do the southern accent. And I've been watching American Gothic, uh, which was out so, in 95, and I'd never seen it before. Have you seen it? Oh, my God. You know, that is one of Mrs. Gunfighter and I, that is one of our favorite shows that didn't make it. Uh, you know, Sheriff Gary Cole is Sheriff Lucas Buck. How could you absolutely, how could you go wrong? It was perfect. It was such an amazing show. And I never, I think when I, I moved to Portland the year that 
the year that it came out, and I didn't do a whole lot of television watching that year. I was busy being young and crazy and working as a telemarketer. Um, but I just recently discovered it on Hulu, and I've been watching it every time I have laundry to fold or dishes to unload or anything at all that I can do that I can have my laptop in front of me. I've been watching it. But the problem is, is everybody on the show has a southern accent. And so I watch the show, and then I cannot help myself but talk with a southern accent. Constantly. Someone's at the door. Someone's at the door. Someone's at the door. Someone's at the door. I've never been so frightened of a sentence before. Yeah, it, it it was pretty scary. You know what? What I'll tell you, as as scary as as Sheriff Lucas Buck could be, he had absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing on the scariest creature ever to grace or to disease a television screen before, and that is Pennywise the Clown. Is that from it? Yeah. Yeah, I I'm afraid of clowns, so I never watched that. Yeah, Just you know what? I'm so I am too, and I shouldn't have watched it. It was really a bad thing, and it had a really. I was, I was what, maybe 24, 25 when that came out. Mm-hmm. Bad news, mistake. I, I couldn't, I couldn't finish watching it. I mean, I was traumatized even further. Did you watch The Stand? Oh hell no! You didn't. I don't watch stuff. No. The the other because that was Stephen King as well. Yeah, what, a, after it, that was the last thing I watched of Stephen King. Never again, never will again. I watched The Stand, and I firmly believe that the bad guy in The Stand should have been played by Gary Cole instead. I wouldn't be surprised. Gary Cole's a good actor, you know. Unfortunately, he's going to be remembered for playing Mr. Brady in that Brady movie. I didn't watch uh, that. I didn't see it either. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I deny, really deny, know. deny, deny. Um, and I would never tell you, even if I did. Are you kidding me? I'll lose all my cred as tough guy gunfighter. Yeah, you will. You become that guy that watched the Brady movie. Was he really in a Brady movie? He was. He played. He played Mr. Brady in the in, the, in that whatever they called it, that Brady movie. Hmm. I haven't watched the Brady movies, but I know that there's more than one. Really? Were there? I think so. I think there's like a Brady Christmas movie and like a Brady Hawaii movie or something. It's just a little too much. My dad is cringing right now as he listens to this. He's in pain that I even know that there's more than one Brady movie. Daddy, I never watched the Brady movies, I swear. No, he's not listening live, is he? No, he's not listening live. Well, but thank God. He'll listen later and he'll be in pain that, uh, that I'm even uttering the word Brady. He doesn't like them. At all. Well, yeah, there, and can there, there's, there's good reason for that. Yeah, I I don't know if it was because of the era that I was raised in, or if it's because I have really much better tastes than other people. But I've never, I've never taken a liking to the Brady Bunch. But you weren't missing much. I mean, it was just pretty much a, a stupid show. Yeah, yeah, it was. And then then there was all the crazy blonde craziness and the crazy. Oh, I didn't do something right. Gee willikers. Although, weren't and they the more. first couple, the Bradys, weren't they the first couple on TV to sleep in, in the same bed? Something like that. Yeah. That's, you Marcia, know. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Why is it always Marsha? I shouldn't be able to do that. If uh, if Mr. Chaos were in the room right now, he would have made the porn music when I said they slept in the air. <laughs> but I think he went upstairs to make me another martini, so it's all worth it to be missing the porn music. Now that's a good thing to do. Yes. You know what? My glass is empty. Get me another martini, babe. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, I brought him down a gin and tonic uh, while he was setting up, so I think this is. You guys, you guys rock. That I think he also really liked to hear that he's the only person I've ever accepted the word no from. Well, I think that's important. I think that was exciting for him after after almost nine years together. No. Right. Mm-hmm. How, yeah. long, how long have you been married now? Uh, we have. It'll be eight years in October. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. And and K and K is four. No, she's six. Six. Yeah. Very cool. If you do the math, you'll figure out that uh, I was four months pregnant when we got married. <laughs> no, you won't get any judgment from me. Luckily, though, I uh, not luckily. This sounds it's such a vain and horrible thing to say. I was very ill when I was pregnant. And mm-hmm. you cannot possibly tell that I was pregnant in my wedding dress because I lost weight um, from my wow. fitting. Oh, 
I was so wrong. I thought he was up there bringing me another martini. He was up there making himself a gin and tonic. Uh, I don't. <laughs> don't tell me he didn't bring you one. He's got one glass in his hand, and it's a gin and tonic glass. Let's see. Maybe That's he just... just accidentally left my martini upstairs. <laughs> maybe he just didn't want to spill it, and so he's going to come back with one, right? Ever since you started making martinis, I I don't make martinis anymore. I can. Is is you want a martini? No, no. If you just tell everyone why I make the martinis and you don't, then I'll go make my own very briefly. Because they're very good. No, I'll make it. I'll make it. No, I'll make it. You can make me one. Not as good as yours. Okay. I'm going to leave you all in the capable hands of Mr. Chaos for about 90 seconds. You don't seconds. want to do that. <laughs> We're going to talk about man no. stuff. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> talk about man no, stuff. Man <laughs> stuff. I'll be back. You guys talk about man stuff. Welcome to the man show. That's right. Where we talk about manly things and manly people and manly men. Because, I don't know. Men are men. I don't know. Well, yeah, sure, because it beats dead air. That's what it does. <laughs> I know. So, we just pause. let's talk about manly movies, Dr. Chaos. So well, normal. you listed um, Outlaw Josie Wales as one of your favorites. I noticed. Well, yeah. So, big Clint Eastwood fan. You know what? I like Clint Eastwood. I like him in a lot of stuff. I'll tell you, the only movie that he ever won an Oscar for, which was, uh, what was that, uh, Pale Rider? Or uh, Unforgiven, I think. That That's it. That's it. Great movie. I didn't, you didn't, I like, didn't it? like it. Wow. I didn't. I like how it, he, he kind of, and this is, this is kind of interesting. I like how... You know, I mean, he did the whole Wild West thing, and then he did the whole Dirty Harry thing. And then when he came back around to the whole Wild West thing, he came back into, you know, what's it like to be a killer, you know? I mean, it, the, the whole Unforgiven thing was about that, you know, right? It, it, you know what I mean? I remember the scene where he's explaining to the kid, you know, what it's like to really kill somebody, right? You know, whereas... I don't know. I, I I sort of liked how he brought that around. Well, I suppose after, especially you know, as a, as a kind of a metaphor for his own career, that uh, you know, you spend your entire time playing this guy who's this remorseless killer. Exactly. Even, you know, even when you're doing it for a, for, for you know for you know, all his roles, oh, I'm killing for a good reason. Exactly. But you know, and and I can't remember a pale writer. I think. Had a similar kind of thing there, something like that as well. Um, yeah. Do you like Do you like the Dirty Harry movies or or Dirty Harry? The, I I like the early ones. I like the yeah. first one. I like Dirty Harry. I like Magnum Force, which was which is a yep. great one. You know, day where he has to kill David's soul and how bad. Can oh that yeah, be? on a motorcycle. That's right. The <laughs> bad. Cop. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um. So so it's interesting because like uh, you know well I guess so so I work in high tech and if I see one of those movies about hackers or something and they're usually really really poorly done right it's like mm. oh computer here we do this and this and it's like that's not how computers work right so I'm kind of like oh man forget that right but you know in your line of work you still can appreciate like a Clint Eastwood movie, a Dirty Harry movie, you know, the gunplay and that sort of thing. Correct? You can you can appreciate them, but the problem is, the problem is when they get too out of hand, it's one thing to see, you know, the bullet that does yeah. something that's, you know, bullets don't really do that. But when you have the guy who throws a grenade and it blows up yeah. half the building, you know, well, you know what? Grenades don't really do that. And, and... I have one name for you. John okay. Woo. John Woo. Love. I mean, if you talk about the, I mean, the the killer and um, hard boiled. I mean, they mm -hmm. never reload. They never reload. <laughs> well, you know what? That's exactly where I was going next with that. Yeah. You know, if if you just show me the occasional reload, even if it's not done well, even if it's not done properly, even if it's not done at the appropriate time, I get that you're trying. You know, a little bit to to make it right. You know, give me a reload and I'll be happy. 
Well, I, I kind of, my take on the whole John Woo, you know, the Chinese. So again, any of you out there, John Woo, a uh, uh, Chinese Hong Kong act, act uh, uh, director, you know, one of the big Hong Kong cinema guys. I think he came up in the eighties, right? Right. Um, and Chow Yun Fat, who I think everyone knows now because he's done a lot of. I know it's I know it's man time, movies, but like. I love Chow Yun Fat. <laughs> yeah, great actor, great actor. Actually, w- considered one of was like the Clint Eastwood of worldwide cinema, right? At some point. Um, but I, I think John Woo. I mean, some of those films, like The Killer, they're almost like high comedy. I mean, I know there's a scene in The Killer where a guy gets riddled like with twenty bullets. And then he gets up and does a scene with Chow Yun Fat for like about five minutes, and they're sitting there talking, you know. And you're just like, I, I almost think it's like some kind of Chinese irony or something in there, I, you know, because it's obviously I'm, not realistic. Strangely enough, you know, bullet performance, and this is one of the things, and, and this is this is almost technical here. One of the things we tell people all the time is that you got to be very, very careful because bullet performance is never guaranteed. Despite how many times you might hit somebody, and even if you're using hollow-pointed bullets and they're designed to perform a certain way, expand a certain way, cause certain kinds of wounds, sometimes they just don't. And, and I actually have uh, uh, contemporaneous uh, you know, anecdotal evidence of that being the case. A shooting that happened here in the, in the uh, Northern Virginia area, and, and God, now I'm getting technical, this is bad. About 12 years ago, where a, a, a guy was shot 14 times before he went down, and even when after he went down and they tried to handcuff him, he still fought for a little while, and he eventually died on the scene. But bullets don't always do what we think they're going to do. Was he high or something? I mean... No. And this wow. is the thing. He had absolutely no chemical stimulus in the system other than adrenaline because oh, yeah. he was highly motivated to get away. Adrenaline can do a whole yeah, hell of a lot. But still, a lot 14 things. bullets? Jeez, Jeez. my goodness. But that's part of your job, yeah. right? To <laughs> not let that happen in a nutshell, right? Yeah, you know, and, and this is and this is a good example of what I tell my guys about all the time. It's like bullet placement is important. You can't just do what we call in my business, spray and pray. You can't throw a whole lot of bullets and hope it works. You have to put the bullets where they're supposed to go. But it seems like, you know, in just average everyday violence, you know, in America that, you know, there's there's so much damage that happens and, you know, could shoot some other kid, you know, and it's 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 pretty, you know, it's fatal, you know, most of yeah. the time, you know, and it's just, it's, it's pretty sad. I mean, it's, I, it's horrible. It, I mean, I, um, yeah, that's the contrast for movies In the movies. You see the guy firing hundreds yeah. of rounds. Someone gets clipped. No one gets hurt. But in reality, one bullet can kill somebody. It's, it's funny too. It doesn't I, take a hundred rounds. I've noticed too with the movies. Now I, I still dig the John Woo movies. In fact, I haven't seen dirty Harry in years and I'm about to pull it out and watch just, just cause it's, I heard the sound bite, you know, from Dirty Harry one day on the on the net, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I got to check that out." But as I get older and I, as I start a family, you know, I, gosh, I I have a hard time sometimes watching violent movies. Um, I actually saw The Matrix, I think, a day after Columbine, and it just sort of okay. tinted my whole. I could never enjoy The Matrix. I actually went to the theater. I was all excited about seeing The Matrix. And it just happened to be, just happenstance. I had the tickets, and it was like, you know, right after Columbine. And so I just sort of sat, and even though it's complete sci-fi and fantasy, it just kind of, you know, depending on the situation you're in at the time when you're, you know, watching a movie, it's just, it you know, context is everything. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, um, you know, so it's interesting. Um so it's, I, I don't know. Do you do you get that like when you're you know, you know you have a you have a family and you know you're getting older and just sort of like the violent movies and the violent after a while you're sort of going yeah maybe that video game is a little violent or something or is it just are you oh oh absolutely you know as as despite what I do for a living you know I I um I see things and I and I shake my head thinking to myself my God you know this is this is this is really bad. And you know, you, there there are thing, there are things that I don't want my my kids to see, and I don't want to have a, a family exposure to. And you know, I, I'll give you an example. <laughs> Yesterday, I was running really late because I was in a, in a in a course, 
And uh, I had to pick up from the babysitter and I had to, 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 to zoom over to soccer practice because it was soccer practice night and I coach her soccer team. And I didn't get a chance to take off my uniform. I didn't get a chance to take off my gun or any of that stuff. And at the end of the practice, one of the girls says, Coach Bill, why do you have a gun? And, you know, I paused and I said, well, there's, there's a really good answer for that, of course. I said, well, I'm a policeman, sweetheart, and, and, I, and I have a gun. And she said, but why didn't you put it on the bench during practice? And I said, well, because if I can't control it, maybe bad things will happen. She said, well, what do you mean bad things will happen? And I said to myself, well, you know what? Maybe you should ask your parents about that. Because honestly, I felt like saying, you know what? Because I don't want the wrong person taking the gun and shooting up the place. And, of course, how do you explain that to an eight-year-old kid? Yeah. That's very. That's a difficult um, situation. Yeah, it was a little weird. Yeah, and recent events in the news actually kind of back that up. I think. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's not. Uh, that was right outside. Yeah, uh, the the one he speaks of is is uh, literally about ten minutes away from my parents' house. So, yeah. 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 Um. I had another thing on this topic, but I think we should move on now to something I have other things new. to move along to. We can get off of very, very heavy well, that was the topics. Man. That, was, that was man time. Yeah, can I say and one no, more man oh, movie thing? Oh, okay. Here's a man thing. I, I have to say, I can't wait until the end of next week to see Iron Man. It's going to be so freaking cool, it's not funny. You are not the only one. I don't I don't know if Mr. Chaos even knows what you're talking about. Do you, Babe, do you know what he's talking about? No, but we're watch, I'm, I'm so watching your boobs right Iron now. Because it's the man moment. You got your boobs out. Oh my god, no, no, that's not fair. No, my boobs aren't out. I'm just wearing a low-cut shirt. That's not fair. Yeah, Iron yeah. Man and boobs. No, yeah, I, I will yeah, probably wind up going with one of my girlfriends to go see Iron Man because Mr. Chaos is not a big movie watcher. Okay, uh, you guys are going to... Yeah, never, never mind Iron Man. We're talking about boobs. Anyway, <laughs> um... <laughs> I have them and you don't. Nee, 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 nee. I'm a you lover. Do. You do in spades. Now, ink. Ink. Let's Shall... talk about ink. ink. You Shall just got we? a lovely oh. new tattoo. I'm very excited about it. I'm so geeked up. It's not funny. It's it, it it's great. The guy who did it, the guy who did my tattoo is really, really super good. I just checked out so, his website. His portfolio is awesome. If anybody who's listening is paying attention and you live in the D.C. area or even if you don't and you want to travel to get a good tattoo, go see Paul Rowe at BritishInkDC.com. He's really the bomb. He's great. He's excellent. He's a swell guy, if I can say swell. Um, he's a real artist, and he cares about what he does. Go see him. I guarantee you, you'll be happy. My plug's over. That's good. Yeah. And if you're in the Portland area, what? <laughs> if you're in the Portland area, you need a good you, tattoo. No ink. <laughs> you need to go to Blackbird Tattoo and see Jesse, because Jesse's awesome, and he's been doing my tattoos since I was 21 years old, and I have never, ever been unhappy. He's done a great job. Did he job. do all your work? Um, no, he's done most of my work. Uh, I had there was a gal that did my work when I first started getting tattoos. I think the first tattoo I got I was nineteen, and I picked it off the wall. Yeah, it's still a beautiful piece. It's a Celtic crescent moon, and it is a beautiful piece. Did I lose you? Are you still there? I can hear you. I am. I, I just heard a big hiss for a second. I don't know what that was, but no, the, my oh, first that's, tattoo that's, I was nineteen. And I picked it off the wall, and it was a good choice. I don't regret it. It's a beautiful piece. Um, Jesse was the one that started doing custom work for me, and he's done a beautiful job. Very cool. Yeah. What was your first now, tattoo? Now, I, the, oh, the first tattoo I got was was uh, not a terribly interesting piece. It was uh, maybe maybe four inches tall and three inches wide. By um, It was an eagle globe and anchor, you know, the standard... Uh, Marine Corps emblem mm -hmm. and it's you know Eagle Globe and Anchor it says USMC under it and I got that in 1986 wow on my left shoulder yeah and that was the beginning and it still looks you know what and I wanted another tattoo right off the bat I really did you know they, they say oh yeah well tattoos are addictive and I said well you gotta be careful Bill you know don't go nuts mm -hmm. and so I, I you know I behaved myself and I and I and I didn't get one and I said to myself you know what this is just too much so a year and a half ago I got the cross the cross of nails on my right shoulder mm -hmm. I I think you might have seen have you ever seen a picture I, of that one I have seen that one it's cross, okay. cross of nails I yeah. I, I can show what? you a picture of it 
Well, can you describe it for our listeners? Mm-hmm. It's it's about nine inches long, and it's 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 a long spike or a nail, and and the two and the cross member is is made of two nails, and there's a scroll behind it that says in Latin it says a cruce salus, and that means in English from the cross comes salvation. And it's very very cool. Paul Rowe did that one as well. Cool. I find when you find a tattoo artist that works for you and that you have um, a comfort level with and that you are confident in their ability, it's difficult to move on and find somebody else. Yeah, it's just... no. What um, did you say? Where where you have that on your body? The cross of nails. Yes, he did. It's on my right <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> Maybe the producer co-host should start listening to the show <laughs> <laughs> while he's doing it. I can tell you, are there three? Are there just three tattoos? So far. I can tell you where all three of his tattoos are located. The Marine Corps logo is located on his left arm. I did catch that. The cross of nails on his right arm and the newest tattoo, which he'll describe in a moment, on his back, between his shoulder blades, I believe. Mm-hmm. Because and, I pay attention to ink. <laughs> and so does the cat, apparently. Um, and what? And the new tattoo is the... Did we talk about that? The new tattoo is currently sure. his uh, his Twitter icon. His Twitter... What's the word for that picture? Tweet. No, no, no. Avatar. Avatar. Twat. Thank you. No, know. no. We don't... Don't say the bad words no, about there the is, vagina. Uh, no, no, no. I... There is... No, no, no. That, that's okay. There is a um, a wiki... Yes, a little wiki. Aaron that Hockley, was, I Aaron believe, Hockley created the wiki. And Verso, mm-hmm. Banana Leaf, Fishbones, your former co-blogger at Metro Blogs, mm-hmm. um, have created a wiki for yeah, some Twitter, Portland. Twitter some words. Portland people have created a wiki for a wiki uh, Twitter dictionary. Imagine that Portland a people Twictionary. did that. Wow, the Portland people are really into their Twitter. Because we don't stuff. work in the federal government, we sit around <laughs> and do shit on the internet. <laughs> It's, all the true. Time. it's true. It's true. In the DC yeah, area, you have people who like work for the government. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. you have the governmental agencies in the DC area. In the Portland metro area, we have geeks. Yeah, lots of geeks. Like, lots who, and lots. Like, make lots of startups and twitters and open IDs and God, what else? Open source labs and, and all sorts of stuff. Treasure licious. And treasure licious. Yeah. M- mm, Mr. Chaos has been known to call me a geek from time to time. In a loving and very positive way. And I always say... And respectful, of course. Yes, exactly. And I always say, oh, no, sweetie, I'm not a geek. Because I know so many people who are really, truly worthy of the title geek. That is true. But you sell yourself short amongst I, people. I think I may do that on purpose. I don't you, like it when people assume that I have information. I used to do that as well. Yeah, I, I don't like geek, it when people think I have well. information that I don't actually absorb very well. Actually, when I was among creative people and musicians... I would not tell them I was a geek. And when I was among geeky people, I would not tell them I was a creative musician person. Mr. I could Chaos. Never, but now... Live in the double life. In the 21st century, it's kind of cool to be creative and an artist and geeky and a geek. So, But I, I, I get know. that, though. I never tell the people that I work with in my gun shoot, my gun my gun world people. Mm-hmm. That I that I write and I don't talk much about my my active my activity in the church, because they, for the most part, won't get it. Yeah. You know, and and you know, what you make rosaries? What are you kidding me? You were just talking a half an hour ago about how to put a bullet in somebody's head. What? Sometimes and, that's know. why you maybe need to make the rosaries. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But then again, saying that people won't get that either. Yeah, do th- guys have that problem more than women? No, I think um, I think he brings up a really good point because it, the people who know me in real life and know about my blog are generally people I've met through my blog. Exactly. Most of my friends maybe have an idea. Yeah, they may may know that Cammy writes a, a blog thingy. They don't get that. You know, I pour my heart and soul into it. I put a lot of time and energy into it. A lot of them don't realize I have now that I've got strange love. And I'm hesitant, especially um, where Kay is concerned, where her school is concerned. Most of the adults I come into contact with being a stay-at-home mother are the parents of Kay's classmates and people that I meet in that arena. And I think I've told a whole two people that uh, 
are involved with me in that way that I write a blog and one of them doesn't touch a computer ever 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 I'm about to give her computer lessons yeah you know none of the people that I work with know that I blog none of the people that that uh, we socialize with know I have a blog um, and you've seen my blog and and, and that I, I go to happy hour like once or twice every quarter I'm so jealous that the, I can't I, be there yeah, with some <laughs> of the people who read my blog and we, we have a good time but you know what none of the people that I know that I would that I would actually go out with a drink and have a drink with uh, who are friends of mine in you know normal real life tangible friends um, those worlds stay completely separate I mean not because there's any big secret but because you know it's just another separation of, of the parts of my life it's easier in some ways that's the interesting thing the separation of the parts of your life that's that's actually something that I'm kind of fixated on myself is like so 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 especially if we use if we talk about on the internet right and we have uh like um i was gonna say friendster that's so uh, twitter twitter we have facebook. um facebook, facebook right mm -hmm. um where people are networking socially but the problem is um the problem I have with all of that, which I don't really do the social networking, Twitter is about as close as I've come to it, which it, it's kind of social networking, but not really. I love Twitter. Um, but, but the thing is, is that I have different roles in life in different situations. So I, I, I've created Doc Normal as my artistic role in life because I have things to say and things to do. Just like you're a blogger, for example, but you're also a dad, a soccer coach, um, you know, Sunday school teacher, right? Which is mm -hmm. probably sort of, I guess it's part of, I, I don't know if it's hard, maybe it's easier for writers to bring that into their writing. But, you know, it, it all depends. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just a disingenuous kind of guy. I you don't know. know but I think it's I've easier. I've got to kind of separate and compartmentalize the, the areas because I can't. I can't be doc normal at work or at home with the kid, right? <laughs> you no, know what I mean? you've been doc normal at home with the kid, but I think it's easier for a writer to bring all of life into their writing. Yeah. But I think sometimes it's hard to bring your writing into your life, if that makes any sense at all. It does. Okay. I think so. Yeah, it's hard. You got it. I, I think Mr. Chaos is still staring at me like, that makes no sense at all. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Looking for the Star Trek yeah no so so say you have think about it i am very honest on my blog with the exception of right like my daughter's first name i'm just out there i'm honest i really don't have a whole lot that right. i'm not willing to talk about but yet yet your your friends the people you interact with are are not the people you interact with on the blog internet side right i so it's, typically so feel have, in a lot of cases closer to some of the people that I um, deal with on the internet than I do to some of the people I deal with in real life. Right. And and uh, and you also know, there's no like, geography it, involved either. What so were you absolutely saying? the geogra geography and distance and and the the ability that even if somebody who lives in the same city, I mean, you know, several of the people that I blog with live here in the DC area. Um, at least one person that that I've gone to happy hour with a couple times, she lives. I, I pass within maybe a mile or so of where she lives every day on the way to and from work. Um, never see her, never see this person, never interact, and all this other stuff. But you, you, even though they live nearby and they're say, in, relatively in the same neighborhoods, uh, you hold that. At, at the the arm's length of this computer screen, and oddly enough, you have these social interactions that that you can develop and enjoy, and and even be as close as those people that you meet, you know, on from day to day, and are your quote unquote normal or regular friends, but you you can have that distance, and that distance allows you to perhaps I don't know reveal more than you would to somebody that you see then look in the look at face to face i think that would be completely true for me until uh maybe a couple months ago i actually met miss burroughs who i have been internet-y with for a while and i just absolutely love her mm -hmm. and it got to the point where 
I got over the fact that she knows all this stuff about me. I got over the fact that she's read my innermost thoughts on my blog and and am actually able to hang out with her and look at her in the eye on a regular basis and talk to her as a regular person, knowing that she knows all this about me. But she's a rare exception, I think. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, but, then, but there's always there's exceptions to everything, I would, I, I would guess. Exactly. So tell me now, I understand when we were talking about ink before, when I was telling you that I was going to get a new tattoo, which I've already gotten, mm-hmm. that you were saying that you have another piece coming up. Want to tell me about that? I do. When I, I'm 31 now, and when I before I turned 30, I had uh, Jesse draw a piece for me, which was basically a belt with 31, with 30 points to it. For one for each year celebrating my 30th mm-hmm. birthday and then I got the stomach flu on the day that I was scheduled to get that my tattoo flu again. over a year ago Lovely. so I never got it I never got it and I'm planning to go in soon to get it um, but it's a belt kind of uh, with kind of some thorned points to it with a rose um, a very uh, I've never seen it you've seen it no I don't think so you, oh maybe you didn't go with me no, um, I didn't see the final there's a Rennie McIntosh. Uh, I don't know if you know who Rennie McIntosh is. Um, I've heard the name. He's a... Really? You're going to put yeah. that on there? Yeah, the Rennie McIntosh Rose. Sweet! Um, he, he's a Scottish architect and artist. I believe he was an architect. Yeah. I know he was an yes, artist. Yes, he was an architect, was an architect, as, architect. as well. The Tiffany of Scotland. Yes, he's called the Tiffany of Scotland. And I have a ring that Mr. Chaos gave me for Christmas two years book. ago. With a, a Rennie, Mark, Rennie McIntosh Rose on it. And that's the center just below my navel and the rest of it is a belt with 30 points oh very nice so i'm terrified because i know it's going to hurt like hell to get my belly tattooed yeah you know what i'll tell you the from all the things that i've heard um when people were telling me that you know bill when you get a spinal tattoo you know it's going to really hurt hurt like a bitch (laughs) and I'll tell you, you know what? They weren't lying. No, they weren't. They <laughs> I've weren't been there. When I, when I got this tattoo, you know, the guy, and, you know, I remember what the both of my shoulder tattoos were like. You know, it was kind of a little bit of a nuisance, and I, I kind of had to really grit my teeth and, and bear down while he was doing this, especially the parts were, that were on my spine. I mean, I could feel the tingling heavily in mm-hmm. my fingertips. It's well, exactly. It spreads. What people don't get is that when you get a tattoo on most parts of your body, it hurts where you're getting it. When you get a tattoo on your spine, it spreads to everywhere else. Random yeah. parts of your body are affected by getting a tattoo along your spinal column, and it's a bitch. Yeah. And if you've seen, I think you've seen my back tattoo, but if, I have. And that, if I can say this is being respectful, of course, exceptionally hot piece. Thank you very much. I'm really, really exceptionally proud of, of my back tattoo. And no one, no one gets to see it, which is fine with me. I'm kind of okay with that. It's kind of my tattoo. So when I put right. it up uh, on my blog, I was like, wow, people are actually going to see it. That's awesome. Do you want to tell the story the time I colored it in for you once? Oh, when I first met Mr. Chaos, it was just the outline. I didn't have, I didn't have it filled uh-huh. in. And we were going to a fetish ball yeah I think it was a fairy tale fetish ball and I was going as Little Red Riding Hood and he was going as the Big Bad Wolf <laughs> but my back was okay. completely exposed and so I had him and and this took a lot of patience on his sharpie. part with a sharpie he filled in my tattoo so that I wouldn't be out in public with my oh, um, unfilled in because it was just the outline and it was I think two months after that that I got it filled in awesome how many how many hours did you have to spend getting that filled? Uh, let's see. The outline was one sitting of three hours, and I think the fill-in was four hours, two sittings, so eight hours total. Wow. That's serious stuff. Yeah. Now, now, Dr. Normal, I understand that you don't have any ink? I have none. No ink and no piercings. He's all clean and pure and stuff. I did have a... Years ago, I have the scar from an earring. That's right. You do you have see? a little hole in your ear. Yep. Yeah. Years ago, someone goaded me into getting a little. Does Mrs. Gunfighter have any tattoos? No, she doesn't. I wish she did, um, but 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 it's not really her thing. I I've sort of talked her into even considering it, and and to get to that point, I've done a lot of work. Um, she may, and we we had this discussion within the last oh, week and a half. She may actually decide that one of these days she's going to get one on her ankle. 
like which a I think little, will be very sexy. like an anklet or just a little piece on the side of the ankle. An anklet, um, and and if you if you ever want to Google this, the Luther Rose. Uh, I know what that is. Yeah, of course you do. I actually think I know uh, what it is. <laughs> what's that? I think I actually even may know what it is. No, is it the one? Is that the one with the? Is it? Does it have a a heart? And a cross in the center as well. Yes, it does. Yep. It does. I'm looking at it right now. It's very pretty. It almost yep. looks like a clover. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That would be a good choice. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it would be very, very nice. And and there again, you know, and, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Ing, women, equals hot, exceptionally hot, at least to me. I, uh, there's probably a few other guys who agree with you. <laughs> there's maybe a, yeah, a couple guys yeah, somewhere. Yeah, maybe one, maybe two. Now, yeah. how? Uh, I have a question. How? How inked are people where you live? I mean, is there just a ton of ink out there, or uh, is it? Do people hide it? What? What's it like out there? We- you see a fair amount. I mean, it all depends on the condition of the person who's got it. I mean. In the in the very very, all right, for lack of a better word, boring world of government, you'll see some. You'll have the you'll see a woman with the occasional ankle piece or something on her chest that's that's not in a particularly uh, hiding uh, hideable place. Higher on the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for for most guys, I mean. If I'm wearing even a T-shirt, you can't see any of my tattoos because they'll be covered even by the shortest sleeve T-shirt. Um, not that I, I I I have them in the places that I have them to cover them, because I don't. I I would just assume people see them, but you know I got them for me as opposed to getting them for other people to look at. It seems like in this area. Um, it's very well common. in the last at least the last few years it's like just everyone has tattoos at least in the portland metro area and it's funny because i went on a business trip to san francisco crazy san francisco and um and i told cammy when i was down there i said you know i see a lot of young people in san francisco and they have piercings and you know some facial piercings and things like that but i'm not seeing nearly as much exposed ink down here as I would see in Portland. Portland has a really. Lot. I think yeah. Portland has a lot of tattoos. I, that's I I, I I guess that surprises me. I would think that you would see a lot more in San Francisco than you would see in 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 a place like Portland. That's Although I I've never been to Portland, so I really can't say. I've been to Seattle. I've been to San Francisco, so I could speak about those places, but never to Portland. I think compared, I lived just outside of San Francisco for several years. And, Where? And I lived in Vacaville. Ooh, where the where the where the mental hospital is? Yes, where CMF is exactly. Yeah. I I not everybody knows to associate it with that, but yes, I lived where CMF is. And wow, that is Beef Town for beef those Town, of you. Vacaville, Beef Town. Chaos this, listeners. The California Mental Facility, or the Correctional Mental Facility, in California, CMF, where Charles Manson was for a short time. Yeah. Vacaville has a lot oh, to be proud of. Oh, good old Charlie Manson. He's still around, too. Interesting enough. Chuck. My, my grandfather, Chuck. who was a, uh, a, a sheriff and a, and a police officer, once um, escorted Charlie Manson Ugh. on, on an airplane. Been. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. That must have been a big... Unless I have my story fun. completely inaccurate. Um that's what I'm sticking to. <laughs> oh, this will, you, you need a wiki page now. I need a wiki page for my grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Cam, Cammy Chaos's grandpa once <laughs> Cammy escorted. Cammy Chaos's grandpa once escorted Charlie Manson, Charlie on, Manson an on an airplane. Um, well, you have to make sure that you don't put quotes around the word escorted because then oh, that can mean something else yeah. entirely. That could be pretty naughty, and I'm pretty sure my grandpa didn't do that. Well, what's the actual technical term? Yeah, well, what is the technical term? For what? For for, for escorting for someone transferring on a, plane. a prisoner on an airplane, is there a technical yeah. term for that? Uh, yeah, it's 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 called prisoner transfer. Yeah, I mean <laughs> nothing too hot tech. It's, yeah, <laughs> transferring prisoners is called prisoner transfer. Yeah. Oh, wow. you don't have some cool code for that or something? No, it's just it's a nine tenner in the Gitmo. 
JoJo. I, I like to you know? I like to throw some jargon at you, but you know what? Come on, you know, man. We 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 don't really use as much as it sounds like on television. It's not the fancy uh, pants talk. Oh come I'll on! This isn't example. like a drag dragnet scene or something. Huh? No. Nobody ever says perp. Yeah, I don't even. That's some. Yeah. That's that bullshit. They come from that comes from television. Except for the NYPD, sometimes you hear that term, but most for the most part, you never hear perp. I've heard. I've heard. That's um, a dumb term. I've heard anyway. cops call um, folks that they take to jail customers. Customers, yeah. really? Yeah. Who, did you hear one of your? Yeah. I mean, well, when you, you know, did you hear one of your cousin's husbands say yeah. that? Or maybe on the police radio too. Uh, we have oh. a few customers coming in. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Cus- cu- customers does work sometimes. Uh, here, here's another thing: if you ever hear a cop say, "Yeah, I really had to give that guy some love," oh. that, 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 tra- yeah. that translates into beating the shit out of somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can Oops. guess that one. Um, I had to give that guy some love. Bless his uh, heart. Oh man. Yeah. Police jargon. Which reminds me of a story. If you, if you have a moment. We have, let's see, how many moments do we have, Mr. We Jess? have 19 minutes of moments. We have 19 moments. Go ahead. Well, then I will then I will make this brief. Uh, I was in a training course with a guy who's a Georgia State trooper, and uh, he, you know, we, we, had a, we had a very interesting rapport, and we, we, we talked a lot, and we laughed a lot, and, and at the end of this two-week course, he says, well, Bill, you know, the next time you're in Georgia, you got to come down and spend some time on my, on my farm, you know? I've got 500 acres, and uh, we'll go hunting, and we'll, we'll do this, we'll do that, and we've even got some wild boar on the property. And I said, well, you know, well, thanks, Chaz. That's a, that's a really nice offer. And he goes, he goes, yeah, well, you know, I'm not telling everybody in this class, but you, you Bill, you're a good old boy. Let me tell you, you're a good old boy. <laughs> and you know what? I don't know how many black men get told that they're a good old boy by a Georgia state trooper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I and so I, I sat with him. I said, hey, Chad, let me let me ask you this question. What do you mean a good old boy? Because you know what? Because your description of a good old boy certainly doesn't look like me when I think about the term good old boy. He goes, well, you're a good guy. I like you. You know, I I drink a beer with you. We'd sit on the porch and we'd talk and tell a few lies and shoot some stuff. That means you're a good old boy. <laughs> there it is. All righty. Can we do that this know- summer? Can we sit on the porch and drink beer and shoot some stuff? Oh, I'm sorry. We live in the city. No, but we can sit on the back porch and have a tiki party. And still not Ooh, shoot tiki stuff. Tiki party's good. Yeah. Yes. Tiki if you good. were here, you could come to the tiki party. Are you a fan of the tiki bars? I, I am actually. Are you a fan tiki, of the tiki what, drinks? Tiki bars and lounge music. Oh yes. yes. We're having a tiki party. We had a tiki party a couple years ago. We have a tiki bar right now. It's in our basement, unfortunately. Soon it will move into our backyard. I'm a big Very fan cool. of the tiki drinks. I, I have lists of my tiki drinks that I make. We have a collection of tiki mugs and we're going to have a tiki party this summer, so I'm very excited. We didn't have one oh, last year because we had a bathroom remodel. And a Disneyland and trip. A Disneyland trip. I do remember the the, the, the remodel. Mm-hmm. Oh, you too? Now, <laughs> oh, absolutely. God. The that was Here's the thing. Hell. Mrs. Gunfighter and I are big fans of the themed party. Mm-hmm. We like having the cocktail party. There we mm-hmm. go. Oh, perfect. You know, you have your, your list of themed drinks and you have your themed music and uh, very cool. We we very, very I would say we are the Tiffany's. same. What, very what, much the yeah. same. What was your last themed party? Um, the last one we had was called Blue Yule. It was a Christmas party, Christmas cocktails. Ooh. And uh, so we all the Christmas music that we played during the party was 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 the blues. Mm. Uh, Charles That's Brown. My kind of Christmas. Uh, uh, Ramsey Lewis, mm-hmm. yeah, you know uh, Ella Fitzgerald, any, you know any number of artists who were singing Christmas music in the blues fashion. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was awesome! Uh, we had a we had a, a a blue Christmas tree on that was lit up on the back deck. We had blue lighting, blue lights on the house. Uh, oh, it was it was really great. And Susan handmade all the invitations. It was awesome. You, we have just stolen your yes. idea for our next Christmas party this year. I'm thinking, Mr. Chaos, please make a note. We're having a blue Christmas party this year. We now have <laughs> yeah. we now have you on the recording. It's like, uh, okay, what was that? Go back to that Fantastic. description again. Fantastic. Could you send me a lights, copy of Susan's blue. invitation so I know exactly what I'll be sending out to yeah. people? <laughs> I will. I will. It, and it kind of looks like the Washington Monument with with this cut out light blue paper and this crepe paper behind it. Oh, it was very cool. Very Fantastic. cool. Nice. I also like to hand make things out of paper. 
you know, my wife is a, an exceptionally creative woman where I am not, although she says I'm creative when I write and when I cook. So, And when you make rosaries. That, and when I make rosaries, yeah, you know, oddly enough, the, the whole artist in me comes out. You know, I think it's interesting. Uh, I think you and Susan and, and Mr. Chaos and I have something very much in common, whereas you seem to be creative in the fields that she is not, and she seems to be creative in the fields that you are not, and I think it works very much the same way in our household. The things that I do creatively, he does not do, and the things that he does creatively, I cannot do. Well, here's the question. Who cooks? Well, that's the one thing that we share. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that is the only thing that we share, but we cook different things. If only I could have that happening for myself. It doesn't. <laughs> really? She doesn't? No, I do, I do all the cooking. Wow. All of it. Just... Well, we haven't done any recipe sharing. I intended to have recipe sharing, and I forgot about it. Okay, well, briefly, what would you like to talk about? What, what, you, what, what kind of thing have you ever seen me write about that you'd like to hear about? You know, you made something, and I think you Twittered it, and I was like, God, I need the recipe for that. Hold on, if I can remember. What is the last thing that you Twittered about cooking? Because there was something that I was really excited about. It's the chaos recipe <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last thing I tweeted a- about cooking, oh my gosh, I can't even, well, I, I'd have to go back to my, I'm, I'm sitting here with the Twitter. Uh, if know. only Twitter had an effective search. Twitter Updates. scan, or tweet scan, www.tweetscan.com. Okay, okay, I'm going to go where Mr. Chaos suggests I go. Tweet scan.com. Scan. And then you just put in a search term. And- www. Tweetscan.com. No, it's not Treasurelicious. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not Treasurelicious.com. They got to start paying us for that. I love you, Miss B and Martin. Okay, tweet scan. No, they did. They did. You know what? They 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 brought us a game. Yeah, and I'm getting taken out to lunch and a pedicure on Monday. Thanks for the game. Yeah. Thank, awesome. Thank you for killer bunnies. I can't wait to to beat your <laughs> ass. Martin. I'm going to take you down, Martin, next time we play Killer Bunnies, Martin. Mr. Cass, Let's we see. need to practice I've Killer gone Bunnies. back a couple weeks. There's coffee with Dan Rather. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> Soylent Green is made out of people. <laughs> no, it wasn't Soylent Green. Wait a minute. you Was it a fish-related item? Did you make some fish recently? I love fish. I have, yeah. What was the fish? Pest. Oh, it was the, it was the, it was probably the tilapia. Um, yeah. Mm, I I am a big sucker for tilapia. There it is. Let's see. Sounds like it'll be tilapia tomorrow. I have to try my new vegetarian cookbook. Let's see. I I think what I had done with that particular was- tilapia was uh, to I I you know. I, uh, press some garlic into mm-hmm. the, into the mixing bowl, a glass mixing bowl. Some dill, some some uh, lemon juice. You know, various shake this the seasoning and that seasoning, whatever you happen to like there, and toss to coat. Mm-hmm. Uh, put in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, and lightly dust with cornmeal, and this, either either. This must have been what I wanted. <laughs> Continue. Either 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 bake at three seventy five for about thirteen to fourteen minutes or 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 pan fry in olive oil, whichever there you, you have to prefer. See the way I cook tilapia almost without fail is I almost similar. I, I cover similar. it with olive oil and then I salt it heavily and then I just fry it in olive oil and it kind of um creates this beautiful salt crust on it. Really? Yes. It's beautiful. It's now, Kay's now favorite you, meal. You, you, Plain salt, or do you use kosher. sea salt or kosher? Kosher salt. So a little yeah. bit of olive oil, kosher salt, and then I pan fry it in olive oil, and it makes this beautiful golden brown crust over the tilapia, and then I usually serve it with green beans and uh, jasmine rice. Now, how heavily do you salt it? I mean, do you cover it? Do you do you do you really really cover it? No. You just sprinkle. Um, no, no, no. It's above a sprinkle. Below a covering, just to create a crust. Okay. Yeah, you, you just enough to create a crust on there, and and it's this goes to show that my child has weird favorites. Most kids are like, eh, I want macaroni and and hot dogs. She wants jasmine rice, green beans, or broccoli. 
or broccolini or asparagus. That she 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 enjoys her she enjoys her lima beans. Daddy, can I have lima beans with my mm. pasta? Mm-hmm. I and, and I mean a whole a whole can. Yep. Of mm-hmm. A you lima know, beans. You know, really you know I would sooner can. shot myself when I was her age than do that. But we've discovered that if you cook it properly, Kay likes uh, Brussels sprouts, but only if they're Very grilled. Good. Grilled. That's a that's a sophisticated taste. Yes. Well, she also likes duck confit and uh, caviar and triple cream brie and what have you. She likes you. caviar. What? Yes, she you likes caviar. caviar. Yes, she when? likes caviar. Oh, when did she? <clears throat> Aunt Chris gave it to her. Huh. Yeah. Though the salty, the cheap salty stuff. Yeah. 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 She also likes up. raw tuna. So, and you were saying she loves cheese, good cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She likes more BA. She likes um, any number of the better cheddars. Mm-hmm. Um, Gorgonzola is a favorite, mm-hmm. and then and, and it's a big favorite for mom and dad. So we kind of understand where that comes from. Kay is a big fan of the goat cheese. Any any form of goat cheese. We have a one that we particularly like. It's a wine cured goat cheese it's called Drunken Goat. She also Ooh. loves truffle cheeses and uh, any number of different brie's. No, no, Susan. Susan loves the brie. Me, not so much. You should try. There's a, a triple cream French brie that we call Crack. For the simple reason that it is so addictive that we cannot stop eating it. And it, for some reason, it tastes nothing like normal brie. But it's just... It's a triple cream. It's a triple cream. Oh, uh, God, it's so good. It's, it, I have some in my refrigerator. I can't wait till tomorrow morning because I think that's when I'll eat it. <laughs> oh, see, you know what? You know, for us, the good cheese gets comes out pretty much right around the time of going to bed. Mm-hmm. So we can't, so it's time for it's time for uh, a nice glass of something uh, adult and some some shishi cheese. Mm-hmm. We used to we used to have our Friday nights when when our um, our favorite babysitter was still in Portland before she moved away to go be happy with her fiance. Still a little bitter. Um, we would go to wine tasting on Friday nights and we would get uh, a plate full of fancy schmancy cheeses and go to the wine shop. And have wine tastings and cheese, and I really miss those days. So do I. <laughs> we need to find a new babysitter that I actually like. That's true. Yes, well, we do. I'd let I'd let you borrow the one that we use, but uh, it's a little distant. Yeah, the distance is a, a little bit of an issue. I'm getting the little uh, wrap it up finger from Mr. Chaos. It looks like we're Uh-oh. going over our time. This is what I was afraid of. I was afraid you'd be too interesting, and we'd keep talking to you. Or too boring and just running on. I'm sorry. Well, no, actually, I don't think you're boring. I hope that the rest of the blogosphere doesn't think you're boring because I've had a lovely... Evening. Have you listened to the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, with the exception of Miss Burl show where we said vagina like 627 times. Uh, or, you know, but is, uh, were there any other vagina questions that you got via email that I should answer before we go? No, I just got those two vagina questions. The what do you think of vaginas and the uh, vagina the vagina haiku question well then in closing let me say that i'm a big fan of them and uh you can hear the uh vagina haiku which i may have to post at my blog and i'm so glad and thanks guys both of you so much for having me on i, I i'm feeling very very honored oh we're honored we're list. honored that you were on our show well, a cool. very late, yeah. late night for you. Exactly. A very late night. Are you three hours or four hours away three. from us? Yeah, it's, it's two o'clock here, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sweet dreams. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. Take care. Good night. Good Thanks. Night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.